Hello friends, so today we're going to discuss the first three problems from the latest bi-weekly contest from lead code, uh, contest 38. So in this video, we're going to discuss the first three problems and the third, and the, sorry, the last problem is on DP. So we're going to discuss that problem in the next video. So let's start with the first three problems. The first problem is sort array by increasing frequency. Okay. So you are given an array of integers, nums, as you can see, and you have to sort the array in increasing order based on the frequency of the values. If multiple values has the same frequency, sort them in decreasing order. Okay. So you have to first understand the question. As you can see in this, the frequency of three is one. The frequency of two and one is two, two. Uh, like frequency means what is the occurrence of every number and now you have to sort them in the increasing order so the number which has the least frequency should come first so as you can see three come first now there are two options one and two both has same frequency which means that both occurs two times in the array now you have to arrange them in the decreasing order which means that the uh, the as you can see in this this comes afterwards for the smallest one then the next one so now you have to see in this problem also uh, as you can see in this problem also sorry in this uh, this is two times one time and three times but if two numbers occurs the same number of times as you can see in this three and three so you have to uh, like arrange them in decreasing order which means that three occurs first then two okay so it means that if two numbers has the same number of frequency you have to put the number which has the largest value first and then the smallest value if they have same number so now what you can do yeah, the question is simple but you have to think over it that you have to sort there but to sort there is you have to first find out the frequency uh, you can make a map but i have used one technique of shifting i'll tell you how you can use this uh, technique of shifting uh, in which as you can see the nums values from minus 100 to 100 that's why we use shifting if the value is from let's assume 0 to 100 or 0 to 500 let's assume then you just use the array to find out the frequency every number and then sort it out according to the given constraints but because the numbers are negative also you have to do a shifting what i mean by shifting is let's assume that i have this number line in which because i can only make an array of numbers in which the numbers are positive so as you can see if this is one two three i have i can only make an array of like this one two three till like anything like 100 but now if i have minus 100 how will i store that number how can i store that frequency if it is minus one how can i store that so what you can do you you know that the minimum value is minus 100 so what you can do you can add any number which is inputted by plus 100 which means that you are just shifting this coordinate uh, system what it means by this is if you are inputted minus one if you are given minus one you plus 100 with this so it will become eventually 99 if it if i have minus 100 then if i have if i add plus 100 to it it will become zero so with what actually i mean is this is the the zeroth point these are negative points these are positive points you just take this zero point to minus like 100 place to the right left such that all the numbers will now become from zero till 200 the range initially is from minus 100 to 100 now if you shift the zero point to the minus 100 point it will be like the the coordinate or the values will be from zero till 200 because the range is from minus 100 to 100 so the total range is 200 so that's why i am doing it from zero till 200 that's why it becomes easy so what you can do for every number just whenever you're taking the input of that number or finding out the frequency of that number just add 100 to it to that number not the frequency but the number and also while you are outputting or finding out the final frequency or the array itself just subtract 100 from it that's why you can get the original value that's how you can do the thing now for finding out or doing the sorting you have to first find out the frequency of every number and for sorting you have to write a custom sort function such that you have to take in mind that if the frequency of two numbers is different then you put the number which is smaller frequency first and the larger frequency next but if like if two numbers are same frequency then the number which has the greater value should be first and the number which is a smaller value should be second and that's how you're gonna write the code i'll tell you more with the code as you can see this is the code in which uh, what you can do I, I have taken you a pair of integers uh, from 200 so 0 to 200 that's why i used 201 uh, okay then what i can do i have initialized 
so the peer value the first value store the frequency and the second value store the value itself so that's why i've initialized it i have initialized the ai value first with zero and the second with i what i mean by this is i have made 100 values the initial value is zero which means the frequency of one is zero the frequency of two is zero frequency of three is zero i have stored like this and then what i have done for all the numbers i have iterated over the numbers in nums of i and as you can see when i have taken the input of nums of i whenever i am updating the frequency i am adding 100 to it then i have to sort it out sort it out using custom function sort function i have used f so f of this so what you can do you can uh, uh, like write a custom solve function in which sort function in which you take the input of pairs and then if the peer first value because i have seen you that the first value is actually the frequency if the frequencies are same then what you have to do you have to return out the one which has the largest value so if a, a dot second is largest you have to return, return out that if they are not different or not same then you have to return out in the increasing order which means a dot first is less than a dot first b dot first uh, the simplest way to imagine is let's assume that you take the input of two numbers a and b and assume that a is before and b is after what i mean by this is whenever you write a custom solve function how to write these values what you can assume that you have two values you have to compare in the sort function which is a and b assume that you just assume that this is b and this is a if i have to reverse them which means that if i am doing a sort function and if i have to reverse them at what condition should be reversed if a is smaller than b then only should be reversed because we are doing an increasing order let's assume that we have got two values and we have to sort them out and if b is smaller than a and we are like sorting an increasing order then we should sort them out so that's what i've done uh, if a is a first which is the frequency of a is smaller than b first then only we will swap like swap it out so that's what uh, this function is doing and then in the end we have to again iterate over the all the values from 0 to 200 if it has some frequency you don't have to do this out also what you can do you have to iterate over the frequency which is stored in a dot first and you have to again push back in the answer because you have to populate these values so as you can see answer dot push back ai dot second and you have to again minus 100 because i have added 100 to it now i have to subtract minus 100 to it and then the answer is this so that's the whole logic for the first problem the second problem is uh, uh, it's actually a little bit confusing to understand but uh, the problem is very simple in which you are given actually a uh, different points in the plane in which what you have to do you have to form a rectangle like this and you have to find out the maximum width rectangle in which that no two points come in between the rectangle what i mean by this is as you can see this is a rectangle then if you form a rectangle of width one then you can easily form a rectangle in which no point come in between this rectangle so if this is a rectangle no point come in between as you can see so uh, you might not understand with this example if you draw this second example you will become more clear so what you can understand in this example is uh, the maximum value because you have to only decide in this question based on the this values x axis values so you just have to think about the x-axis values in this question the x-axis is like maximum value is 9 so i'll draw it out to make it even more clear uh, so let's assume that i have a coordinate plane in which it is like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 and then what you can easily see in this question is the points are just don't think about the y coordinates just think about the x coordinates because we have to find out the width so 3 9 1 there is one point at 3 one point at 9 one point at 1 and the other point is at 1 5 and 8 there's another point at 1 5 and 8 now you have to fit a rectangle in this such that what is the maximum width of the rectangle such that no point come in between this so let's assume if i choose a rectangle like this like this then this point come in between this rectangle so i cannot choose this rectangle so what i can choose is i have to just find out the rectangle such that no two point come in between so if i know the x-axis of all the rectangle points then i can only put a rectangle at these limits so let's assume that 
if i sort out all these values all these points then i can easily get that okay the minimum value is 1 10 the second point is 1 4 so it means that both two points are here so i cannot form a rectangle in this the minimum width is 0 the next point is this so i can take one line at this point and the other line at this point so this can form a valid triangle the next point is this so i cannot take this point i can just take the just previous point so that's why i have sorted it out so if i take this point then the next point can be this so this can be a valid width if the if the next point occurs at this so the previous point occur at this point so this can be a valid width and this can be a valid width so what you can easily see in this question is we just have to find out the valid width which is the difference between the two consecutive points and that's how you solve out this question you just have to sort out these values as you can see and answer is initialize minimum uh, so you have to find out the maximum value so the initial value is zero then you iterate, iterate over from the second point to the last point and subtract out the x coordinate value which is a zero value for the i th point and the i minus 1 point so as you can see and the answer is just the maximum among all of them so that's the question for the second problem the third problem seems complicated but it's very simple due to its constraint if you find out the constraints now the uh, third problem states that you are given s and t and you have to find out the number of ways you can choose a non empty substring of s so you have to find out a substring of s and replace a single character by a a a different character such that the resulting substring is a substring of t what is mean by this is you have to understand this example as you can see in these two strings this com pute and com puta only differs by e and a so this is a valid way so what it means by this is you have to find out a substring in s such that it is a valid substring of t if you just replace one character what i mean by this is if you take a substring of s replace only one character in that substring it should become a valid substring of t so if to find out the number of valid substring in s so now uh, in this question because the uh, constraints is up to 100 you can do an o of n cube solution also so it's very simple you have to find out all possible uh, substring of s it can be done in o of n square and then for every string you have to match it with the string in t every substring in t and if the number of if you do like if you just like if you just get a substring in s match with every position in t which can be done in o of n you can easily check that what is the numbers matching in the substring of s and the substring of t if the number of characters differ by only one position then the answer is yes this is a valid substring of s which can just be reversed by one character or change one character so it can become a valid substring of t so that's why it can be done in o of n cube so you just have to look into that constraint and that's the problem that uh, lets the problem is very simple i'll take on to the code part now so as you can see answer is just the total answer uh, n size okay then you have to find out all the possible substrings how, how you can find out all possible substring take two pointers one pointer for one point in s and the other point what i mean by this is if you have one uh let's assume you have some string a b c d e you just take one pointer i and other pointer at this position j and move j one by one position and take all the strings so what i mean by this is as you can see if initially j can be at the position of i so uh, i is at 0 so j is again at 0 so the first substring can be a so iterate over j now the j is in the next position so the string can be ab the next is abc then d and then e so you just keep on appending then move your i to the next position so this is the next starting point so now the next substring starting at b is b c d and d so like you're finding that one substring is b second is bc then bcd then bcde then the next starting point next starting point is c so the next substring is c cd cde so next starting point is d so the substring is d and de and so on so for every substring you have to check that if i take this substring match it with the substrings of t so how you can match it if i just take a substring as you can see in t which is like b a b a and i just send a string let's assume c i match this string with the strings in uh, s and then check that 
how many characters are matching and how many characters are not matching so as you can see in this one character is not matching if the number of characters not matching is equal to one then only i can just change this character and the num and the string will become uh like match so how you can do that you can just take this string uh, and count out how many characters are matching so i'll tell you with the code part now so that's how you can form or find out all the substrings this is the check function you just appending and forming the new substrings and then just checking out that whether this substring which i've extracted out from s is a valid like valid substring for t and then you have to just uh, call this check function and thus for every check value just have to append it in the answer like calculate the total answer and just return out this answer how this check function is working as this check function take the input of the substring from s and the total string t now what you can do you can iterate over from uh, like from zeroth position from the original t string and the ok string which is a, or like the string which come from s then keep on matching as you can see and just keep on matching the ok value with the t value and just counting out how many values are matching in the end so if the total length n minus s the total number of characters matching so total number of string minus the total number of characters which are matching is only equal to 1 which means that the total number of characters i have minus the total number of characters which are matching if the difference between them is equal to 1 which means that only one character is different so we just add the total total means that okay this is a total storing how many if i have this string how many substring i can extract out from t and just in the end return out the total so you just write down this code by your own understand this code if you still have any doubt please mention down and i will post the next video in few minutes so stay tuned in this channel i'll see you in the next one keep coding bye